Alright, gonna start the tutorial anyway. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? So, say you're wanting to pick this category up. Uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to have a Game of the Year edition or 1.0. And if you're on Game of the Year, um, you have to disable the expansion files. So you do that by going to the Morrowind Launcher, and then hit Data Files, and uncheck Tribunal and Blood Moon. And then you should be good to go. And as for the, for the menu, the option settings I mean, you have to play on zero difficulty. Um, that's the only mandatory thing. The other settings, I would recommend this being fast, because why would you want to make your menu slower? Transparency is like a preference. AI distance is basically the game will render AI and like NPC animations um, farther or like closer. So if you put it at near, it uses less like processing power because they have like lower detailed animations, like less detailed animations. But if you put it at far, like that, that distance will increase. And I have. Auto save when rest off because I think the saving takes like a little bit of time. So I don't even need to save anymore, so I just have it off. Always use best attack, is useful for like the two enemies you have to kill with the sword in the very beginning. Um, subtitles and crosshair are just preference. Um, and for controls, I use mostly default. I don't know if spacebar is jump by default. I feel like it is. The only thing that I do differently is for next spell or scroll, I have it on V, so my thumb can switch spells while I'm moving. And I use this quite a bit. Um, it saves time because otherwise you'd have to open the menu and select a spell in a lot of cases, but I can just do it while I'm moving with a V. And I don't think that's default. I think it's equals sign or something. And for the view distance, really you'd want to have it at least halfway. And gamma correction is just if you can see well. If you can't see at all, then in dark areas, then you, you should turn it up. And real time shadows off just to have less like less load on the CPU. So you're gonna name your character whatever you want. This is where you get off. Come with me. Here, you want to kind of strafe around him, and you can move past him before this pillar here. Also, time starts when you hit OK, and you can press spacebar to to hit OK. You don't have to use your cursor here. So what I do is I have one thumb on spacebar, my other hand, like one of my other fingers on my other hand is on my start split button, which is for me it's left arrow, the left arrow key. That's just how I like it, you can do whatever you want.
But yeah, start, uh, timing starts when you hit OK. And you're going to be on uh, moving diagonally throughout the entire run. You have to select red guard. It's really the only option. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. For this kind of run. Here you can start the dialogue with Sokotius by pressing E, which is just the default like speak button. And I move my cursor up to the ceiling, so when it pops up. My cursor is already on this button. And you just want to copy this class. Stealth, Speed, Personality, Longblade, Athletics, Restoration, Unarmored, and Mercantile. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? You can scroll down while your cursor is here and get to the steed as fast as possible. Hit OK. Interesting. Now before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Press spacebar twice there. Take spacebar twice again. Take the platter. Open your in, uh, open your menu. Drop it on the table. Move left to trigger this this dialogue with the guard, hit goodbye, take the platter and hit spacebar again, spacebar again here, another spacebar, take the ring, spacebar twice, open the door, spacebar, select adrenaline rush, ready your magic, Morrowind duties, good goodbye, cast adrenaline rush, I'm waiting. another spacebar, talk to Fargoth, ring, yes I found it, goodbye. Move diagonally to Arl's trade house. Move up. Buy resist magica. Sell the platter. Buy two Elm CV intervention. Now you're gonna make your way to the flying scroll, dude, Tariel. And to move to the that spot as fast as possible, you want to take the exact route I'm going. So it's in between these two rocks, and you just want to diagonally move. And you can see this tree here. You want to be to the right of that tree. And you can switch to Elm CV Intervention while you're doing that. Equip his sword, take the scrolls, and exit. Now you're moving up to the left. I'll just show you kind of what it looks like. Normally I would be doing like this, diagonal movement, but you can see the tree here in the tomb. If you kind of smack the the part of that tomb entrance, you won't take any damage. So strafe through here, go to the urn, hit E twice because it, it is trapped, so you have to take the trap and then, then you can uh, actually inspect it. Take the ring. The best way to do it is left click, then just right click, and then um CV. Normally I would have a drill and rush here, like still active, but I was kind of going slower and explaining. So get a drill and rush ready again. You're gonna buy one potion of mark, and then immediately key bind it on whatever key you want. I like to use four for potion of marks. So it's inventory. Push the marking, okay. Then you gotta rest 24 hours for a drawing rush. Cast it and leave. Go next door, ready your sword. And you just wanna kill this woman. Hopefully you don't miss a bunch of times, because it's slow. But it's just completely random. So you want to take her, sho her shirt, her shoes, 
and her skirt. Those are all exquisite level, which you'll need for later in the run. Here's some more diagonal movement towards the Mage's Guild. Drop a mark like right here. Don't stop. You shouldn't have to stop to set the mark. And then enter, and you want to join the Mage's Guild and hit yes. Goodbye. And then you go to the chest, take the Elm CV scroll and a Divine Intervention. Do the same thing where you left click and right click to exit. And now you want to talk to this High Elf for Resist Magicka spell. It's got to be on self, 100 to 100 points. I just press E to name it because it has to be some kind of name. And buy. And talk to this woman, travel to Card Caldera. There you just want to get through that area as fast as possible using diagonal movement and getting to the door as fast as possible. Now we're going to talk to Beric Jermaine. We're here for his Amulet of Recall, so buy it. Leave. Go to the Gorak Manor where the Creeper is. Go upstairs. Take all of this, this crate here. Go back down. Now you're gonna get a lot of gold. So the first thing you do, sell the Curious and the Pauldrons. And you have to rest 24 hours. Then you're gonna buy a skooma from him. You're gonna buy back the curious, and you're gonna sell your ring. And you gotta rest another uh, 24 hours, and then you're gonna you're just gonna sell the curious and the greaves. That's all you have left, and make your way out of here. In this little balcony, you can get caught, kind of stuck, and if that happens, you just have to enter again. But what I like to do is I move up a step, I jump, and then I hold forward. And you want to go to Shang's shovel here. Go upstairs, open this door, kind of go to the right because it swings, so if you're, if you're here, it's just awkward. It's better to be on the right side. And you're going to want to train Athletics um, to 40, level 44. You can move the training, you can move the window so that the training button is on the button. So you just press E and click twice. Get ready to your Adrenaline Rush. Use your Skooma. Open the keybinds to whichever keybind you want. I like 5 for Amulet of Recall, hit OK. And we're going to make our way out. And you go this way kind of through the buildings. And this is this is a good time to have like a save just to practice like what's the fastest way to get to where you're going here. Because you can get lost easily when you're starting out, and it's just one of those things you should just practice. Also, get ready your amulet recall. Get your sword out. So what do you want? Kill Pemini. I have the upper hand. Take her boots, and while you're at it, drop your sword on the ground, and then hit your recall button. And now we're gonna go to Caius. So use diagonal movement again. And while you're doing this, select your Resist Magicka spell, the custom one, and hopefully it works and you can cast your boots, uh, you can put your boots on, I mean. So at Caius, you want to do Report, Yes, Yes, Orders, Orders, Continue, and that sets you up for the next quest. And while you're at it, train Unarmored. I like to train once, you'll get the level up notification and do rest until healed. Do strength, speed, and personality, hit OK. And we're gonna wanna train 10 more times for another level up. 
So what I do here is I move my window up again so that the button's on unarmored, because that's the one we want to level up. Go ahead. And you can just spam it to level 41. Here you want to rest like at least 15 hours, and this is so you get Adrenaline Rush ready when you need it. Next. Or 17 hours, just to be safe. Um, do the same thing, strength, speed, and personality. Immediately you want to select Divine Intervention. Here I have to use the menu, because I would have to hit V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like 7 times or something. So I just open the menu, get Divine Intervention, and we're going to be at the Moon Moth Legion Fort. Just move forward immediately. Move up this like hill here. And you want to get uh, Alm CV Intervention ready. And you can do that by just getting your Recall Amulet and hitting Next Bell one time. And it'll always be Alm CV Intervention. You want to grab the cube, kind of tap W just so you're not like aiming past the shelf. And go to the potion shop again. Now you want to persuade, you want to bribe her. Like hopefully it's twice like that. Um, you want to get to like 95-ish. But if it, you know, if it took like, it shouldn't take more than three for that to happen. And now we have to buy a bunch of potions. So the first shop I do, first buying I do is, I always know that the exclusive health is gonna be here. So you wanna set your window up like a way that you can remember where the positions of items are for this particular section. And hold shift. This allows you to, instead of having this thing up here, um, if you hold shift, you can just instantly buy the stack. And for me, I just have to go up, uh, like three or four potions, and buy a restore agility. And then it's to the right and down one, for one restore strength. And then I get one mark, which I know will be here. And then, rising force, which is kind of before the ingredients section, it's the last potion. And then we're gonna get uh, 12 more exclusive restore health for a total of 14. And we're gonna get 15 more marks. Potion of marking. That we'll need for the entire run. So it's just one, two, or just like that. And like you can do this like however way you want, but um, it's definitely hard to like do this menuing part real fast. So right now I just I have 12, I bought two, so I'm gonna have 14. So I just need um, nine more marks. kind of tedious, but it's kind of the best we can do for now. Uh, after that's done, get your recall and recall. You're gonna go. You want. You're gonna want to go upstairs to the Mage's Guild. Talk to Gal Badir. Again, persuade her or bribe her, so you get a, a discount on every time you shop. And then you have to buy these five different scrolls uh, six times, and they're two each, so it's going to be twelve. Twelve of each, and they are Elm CV. And then Divine Intervention and Drathus Winter Guest. The Drathus Winter Guest is your main damage like tool in the, in the entire game. Uh, so you can just double click for those, because they're like one right after another. And then it's couple down 
on Deucey's unhinging, and one, two, two more down, tell the Rams Scorcher. And I like to, at this point, I like to move my menu, like make it smaller so that the offer button is not all the way over here. So I got six now. Eight. And like this is a thing you can lose a lot of time on as well. But yeah, it's just good to practice it and uh, get used to the buying. So goodbye, recall, go to the fighter skill. Try to die try to move diagonally here as well. You just never want to not be moving diagonally. But you go to the basement or lower level, open the door. Talk to him about favor, and then sixth house. Goodbye and recall. And we're, now we're making our way to the Silt Strider. I like to um, hit next bell twice for a divine intervention. We're going to be using that soon. So make your way up the stairs. Go to Sedanin. Go down to the right. I'm just going to show you what it looks like holding forward, but again, you want to be moving diagonally. Jump over this little rope, and at this point, you want to just kind of run at the rock, and it kind of you use it as a little ramp of sorts, and enter the entomb. And at this point, I like to set up my other keybinds. So for one, I use uh, my health potion. Two is going to be my fire scroll. And three is going to be my frost scroll. Seven is going to be my open lock scroll, which you don't use for a bit, but you just set it up now because you're you're kind of in the menu anyway. And hit OK. Get your your spell ready. Make your way through this tomb. Open the door. Open the other door. Move past the bone walker. Grab the skull. Divine intervention out. And here you can select a adrenaline rush. It should be immediately right there after you hit next bell because you just use a scroll. And start moving this way to the left. And then kind of like a 180 out. And we're heading toward the Dren plantation. So I'll just show you what it looks like kind of moving forwards where you want to go. Get your cross skull ready and enter through that door. Go upstairs to the right. Now this is kind of like an annoying fight. Um, ideally you won't get hit at all, um, but if he hits you, you should use a healing potion. And you, you pretty much always get staggered if you get hit by him. But you shouldn't get knocked down. Like, you shouldn't get on the ground, basically, because you have enough agility. But it does hurt a lot. And I guess if you didn't even use one at all and you kept getting hit, you would just die. So that's... Definitely don't want to die. But the best way to approach this fight is to basically... Run up to him, use the scroll, move back down the stairs, and then keep doing that. And it should take, I believe, five or six scrolls. And once you've, once you've used the last one, you should be up there. Like, as soon as you landed it on him, and you did not get hit, um, you want to move out of his sight, which is just around this corner here. And if you don't do that, this this asshole with a, a paralyzation dagger will come like just out of nowhere. I honestly don't know how it works, but he just spawns after he dies if you're in his line of sight. And 
you, you you pretty much always get stunned, and he can like stun lock you for a really long time. He'll force you to use uh he'll force you to use another store health potion, which is bad, and it's just a horrible time loss that can be avoided. So I'll show you what it looks like. And if he does spawn, just do a little ring around the rosy. And hopefully you won't get hit, but hopefully you won't spawn at all if you do it properly. And we... You have to kill him for the main quest. But we also want um, his spear to sell. So take his spear. You can take his gold as well. But it's not really necessary, I just do it just in case, but you don't need to. And here, there's a skooma that can be useful. It crashed, but... I, I hit load game, but it crashed. So, hold on. And if it crashes, you'll get these, like, these error messages. You can just spam spacebar, skip them. Alright, so we're gonna try it again. Remember you have to use Frost Spell, because he has he's a, a dark elf, so he's got resistance to fire, like 75%. You definitely don't wanna be just standing here and doing it like this. You'd really want him to, um, you'd really want him to be standing still up there. Try to get a good attempt in. Alright, ready your amulet of recall as soon as he dies. Take the spear and the gold. Skuma, recall. You want to use your skooma and go up to the scrolls lady again. I have a feeling you and I are about to become Here we're going to just buy um, more of the frost and fire scrolls. So what I do first is I buy both of them. And their positions are always like you buy the frost scroll and then it's kind of like a diagonal. It's always going to be like a diagonal thing. So buy, buy them five times. And now you want to actually sell them back. You want to sell the Drathus Winter Guest back. Notice how I've got a 15. Now when I go to buy them again, it's going to be in intervals of 17. So I have 0, now I got 17, 17, so 34, 51, and I'm going to buy two more, but on this one, I will have to sell my spear, make it a max sale, then one more time, it's nice to have an extra undo seat in case you have really bad luck. As well for later on and then you're done you've got all of your scrolls for the rest of the game hit goodbye and recall now make your way to Caius and while you're doing this get a uh, um CV intervention and after you use um, your recall it's next so you only have to hit the next spell key once so go to Caius mark at Caius with your keybind of potion to mark and then you're going to want to talk to him, orders, 
orders. You can just do it like that. You can just go click click. And hit goodbye. And I already used my mark, so I'm going to use the Elm CV Intervention. We're going to make our way to the Mage's Guild. Get your recall ready again. We're going to talk to the Orc. Errand, Errand, Nerevri and Cult, goodbye. And then talk to Ajira. We want to buy a Rising Forest Potion. Offer, goodbye. And recall at Caius now. Orders, orders, goodbye. And turn to the door as fast as possible and press E to get out of there. Make your way to the Silt Strider as fast as you can with diagonal movement. Travel to Vivek. As soon as you get here, open up your menu. Uh, you can press spacebar, so it'll just select all. Even though you select it all, it'll only use one potion. So you have to, you know, you have to do it like this. You have to click on your guy. We're just gonna go up here. Again, diagonal levitation is faster than straight levitation. So go left to the Black Shaw Corner Club. And Julia at at Julia, talk to him about troublesome fools. Pick goodbye. This guy right here, persuade him 100 gold. Filthy lizard, goodbye. Travel together. Yes, follow me, goodbye. Just make your way to the door. You should be able to move to the next uh, area pretty fast. And we're gonna go basically across the room. The opposite side. And you can hit to the next area once he's kinda past that door. Talk to him about Nerevarian Colt. Goodbye. Get Adrenaline Rush ready. Um, wait 24 hours. Go to this Alchemist that's right next to the bookshop. Or, yeah, that books. The bookshop. Here we're gonna have to buy a Skuma, a Telvani Bug Musk, and another Rising Force. And cast your. Adrenaline Rush, um, take the Skuma and the Rising Force, and exit. Here you just want to fly over those guys, go right. This is the, um, it's a different door than you entered. But we're going to move to the St. Olm's Canton like this. Get your Drathus Winter Guest ready. Enter that door. And the sky is going to be right here. So you want to use your Drathus Winter Guest. Switch to Taldoram, hit him once after that, and then another Guest. After the fire, you want to step back to make him run. And then you can use your Untouch scroll, another Frost scroll. And it should outrange him, and you won't get hit at all. And if an, if an ordinator talks to you now, just pay gold. Goodbye. And then, um, make your way down here. You want to have an Elm CV intervention ready. So, you can do it quickly again by just having, um, your recall button and then next bell gets you right on Elm CV intervention. Talk to Adoran here about 6 health cult. That's it. Goodbye. You make your way to the Hall of Wisdom, and then up and to the left to the library. If you did not talk to an Ordinator, um, and you tried to talk to Mera Milo, she would not, like, want to talk to you. But there are Ordinators right there, thankfully, that will run at you, and you'll have to pay gold. Um, so once you've done that, talk to her. Goodbye. And then make your way to this bookshelf, open up your menu, click on the Progress of Truth, click left click and then left click again and that'll trigger the ordinators to make you um, pay gold say goodbye it's gonna be on the ground just take it open up your or get your recall again ready and once she stops 
you can open up the dialogue, talk to her about Nerevarian cults, hit goodbye, and recall. Now you gotta do orders, and then goodbye, and then orders again. Goodbye. If you try to do orders, he'll say do freelance work, but if you hit goodbye, he just allows you to take the orders again. So make your way to the Silt Strider. Travel to Ald's room. You can keep your... You should keep your recall ready. Make your way to the Ald's Scar Inn. Go up, down these stairs, to the Hasor Zane Subani. Now you must bribe him to 80 disposition. So I, I use 100 gold, like always. Got 86. Now I can talk to him about business. Gift giving customs. Thoughtful gift. And Ashlanders. And you'll get his notes. Goodbye. And recall. And then talk to Caius. Orders. Continue. 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 Goodbye. Open the door. Make your way to the Silt Strider again. While you're doing this, try to get Adrenaline Rush ready. Doesn't really matter too much, but something you can do, and should do. So we're going to want to go to Aldrin again. Here you have to do some resting, because your Adrenaline Rush, adrenaline rush won't be ready. So, usually like 15 hours should be sufficient. And then, go to cool. We make a special trip just for you. Um, and at this point, cast your drone rush. Change your app. I forgot to mention this. Um, so I have my stats and my my map, like, kind of pinned. And you do that by cl like clicking this little button here. And it's not really mandatory, but I, it's something I like to have. Um, same for the stats as well, because it's just it's just better, I think, in this kind of run. But yeah, um, you don't have to do it every time. It'll be like that every time you play. So as long as you like did it at one point, you won't have to do that again. Um, but for the world thing, it gives us a better picture of where we, we're trying to go. Because we're going to use the Icarian Flight Scroll to move like really fast to our destination. So change your map so that's on world map. Cast a draw and rush, which I did. Select the Icarian Flight. And you want to move forward a little bit so you don't bonk your head like an idiot. And then kind of position yourself in like to the right. Kind of like East, maybe slightly up a little bit. Let's see if this was east, like slightly up. But the um, the cave we're trying to get to next to the Urshaliku burial uh, grounds or whatever it's called is like right around here or so. So you want to point your this cursor in that direction and then cast it and do a jump. And get ready to use a mark. And how I do it is... There's like some load screens that occur when I'm moving. And there's like... There's exactly like four for me every time. Could be different for you, but um... It'll be like one, two, three, four. And right after the fourth one, I pop my potion of mark with four and then I switch to recall and use recall. It doesn't really matter when you use the recall just try to do it uh, as fast as possible after you use mark. Um, and that's also something you want to make a save file for and practice it a bit. And it's that's it's really easy uh, once you get it down. So this should put you in front of the cavern so I kind of look around a little bit where, where like where am I at and I, I can see the door, so I start heading diagonally toward it. Here you want to move diagonally, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like, kind of the path you want to take. I guess I'll do like a normal 
run through of it. And then I'll do like a better run through. Move down here, get to this zone. Use your last rising force. Go left. Get your fire scroll ready. Go up. To the right a little bit. Up to this rock. It's kind of a dark looking thing. Um, take the staff. Go down and to Juno Burial. Here you go up to the right. See this little formation here? Use five scrolls on him. Five fire scrolls. Um, take the bow, left click, right click, and then recall. I'll just run through that again. Let's switch to my fire scroll, get to the next area, go up. Holding sprint doesn't do anything, but I'm pretty sure diagonal levitation is faster than straight levitation. So one, two, three, four, five. And he's, it's kind of hard to see his corpse or what is left of the ghost. But take the bow, left click, right click, five for me, and then recall. Oh, normally my map would be on world map. And at this point, you have to move northwest a little bit, or north and west a little bit, I should say. But the, uh, the camp is, yeah, the camp is like northwest of the cavern. Uh, once you arrive, get to Zabamun's yurt. Yeah, that's why I moved diagonally, because it's always faster. Like, you literally just move faster than if you were just holding W. So you have to hold W and A, or W and D. Um, so once you get to Zabamun's yurt, talk to him about prophecies, or Evereen prophecies. Choose the bottom option, offer to pay tribute of 200 gold. Goodbye. Head next door to the Ashkan's yurt. Use a potion of mark. Talk to him about the prophecies, and then initiation rite. Twice. Prophecies again, should be there. Continue, goodbye. Leave, and then make your way to the wise woman's yurt. It has this little Nice mat. Get Adrenaline Rush ready. We're going to do another jump. I'll talk to her about prophecies. Continue. And then pass the test. I like to just do it from here. Goodbye. And use a bed roll. Wait 24 hours. And now you have to do a little math. Um, some simple arithmetic. And you have to rest so that it's 6pm or 6am. Could be... Like, whatever's closer is better. So, for me, it's just three hours, and it's worth noting that once you click on this bar, it's always in increments of two. It starts at one, so I know just one click, one, and then uh, I can hit rest. Cast your uh, Adrenaline Rush. I'm gonna save. And get a Carrying Flight ready again. Leave. Now you want to point kind of like this, kind of diagonal down right, and hold forward and jump, or cast the scroll and jump. While you're flying in the air, or jumping I guess, use next spell um, like seven or so times, however many times is needed, for the wizard staff, and cast the wizard staff like, so that you kind of got the most distance, but you didn't fall to your death. And the place we're going to is the, um, the Cavern of the Incarnate. 
and the visual cue that I have on the world map is this little kind of dark spot. This might be hard to see, but there's a little dark spot here. It's kind of like down from this this little notch on the map. So that's how I know like the direction I should go. Get to this this door, this fancy door. Move forward. And you gotta take the ring. It's kind of annoying, but the way you should do it is kinda like so that it's just as easy as possible to take it. Derivar. So take it, press escape, talk to Peak Star, who's gonna be on your left. Talk to her about not the one. And if you do this with all the other past Nerevarine guys, or gals, they'll give you like some artifacts, but the only one we're interested in is the Travel Stained Pants. So talk to her about not the one, she'll give you the pants, goodbye, open up your quick tees, and I have my, um, my pants on six, I, always. Gotta scroll down a little bit, select the pants, hit OK, six, and use them, and leave. And now we're going to head up, kind of northeast. Mm, let me turn up view distance. So there's some cliff racers, you can just hit them with a frost spell if they're annoying you. But ideally you'll just want to ignore them. And I kind of overshot it here, but you want to get to this this tomb. Again, that's a thing you should practice with a, a save. Just getting from the the cavern of the incarnate to this tomb, as like in a straight uh, line as possible, so you're moving, you know, the minimal distance, the minimum distance. And once you're kind of close to the door, use your pants again. If it's your first time doing the run and you're just going through the game, like the, the route, I should say, um, just to learn it, you should save. Um, so use your pants right outside the door and get inside. Select the, the scroll, cross scroll, and here you're going to want to just move past this bone walker and then. That door, right here, you have to press E twice on it, because it's got a trap. This, this poison trap here. Um, it doesn't do much damage, but if you press it once, um, you could get caught up by those skeletons, and they're annoying, and they pretty much always knock you down when you get hit by them, so it's just really bad to get hit by them. So hit E twice, and then a third time to close the door. Um, and you want to do it as fast as possible. If you're slow, they'll get through the door, and you have to deal with them. And it's just a time loss. So now we have to kill this vampire. He's got a, 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 cool, a ghost with him, which shouldn't really be threatening. But you can use a fire scroll to kill it. And he takes four, uh, four frost scrolls to kill. You don't have to loot anything off him. I don't know why I looted him. And then there's going to be... Um, the skeletons are going to be like right there. Which is annoying. So what you can do... Um, you can actually use your fire scroll through the door. So I'll just go through what it looks like. So 
So I've killed the skeletons through the door with the fire scroll. Get out of there as fast as possible. These are annoying me, which they, norm they normally aren't here, but it can happen. So now that you're out of here, you should have your levitate up, um, and you just want to move, you're going to want to move, like, straight south, kind of. And then you'll get a map thing for the True Lift Ruin, and move a little bit more uh, east. And normally you should have uh, your levitation still up, but it's okay if you don't. So, you gotta move southeast from this landmark, it's about around here. And we're at the Zainab camp. Here you wanna go to the center one, Ashkan's Yurt. Talk to Kaushad, you want to, you have to bribe him to 80 disposition. And that was annoying because I got 79, so I have to do it again. Talk to him about Nerevereen. Tell your story. Ask him to set a task. Calvario. Nerevereen, continue, and goodbye. And then immediately make your way to the wise woman's yurt, who again has a little rug in front of her yurt. Talk to her about council, and goodbye. Rest 24 hours at the bedroll, and then recall. Should be at Suomatul at Urshaleku camp. Talk to him about council. Continue. Urshaleku Nevereen. Then need. You can do it from here or here. Need. And then duty. Because if you do it the other way around, you have to scroll down to hit need. And you have to talk to him about both. So. After you do those two, you can talk to him about Urshaliku Nevereen again, and hit goodbye, he'll give you... You basically complete the quest for Urshaliku Nevereen at that point. And then we have to use Umsivi Intervention. And now we're at Nissus again, or Nissus, not again, but we're at Nissus now. So make your way to the Silt Strider, go to Aldrun. Get your your pants ready immediately and fly to this big dome building. And then you want to move forward, set a mark like this, so that you're looking at those triple doors. So set the mark. And then basically you want to um you want to move to this door. But you can tell like where everything is, because this is the entrance. It's got a little banner over it, and then um, this is where you want to go—the one on the left. So you set your mark in that position. Turn around. Go to the one on the left, and you should have your pants, your your levitation up already from when you cast it, just before. And then you want to get um, an undo C ready, so I hit 7 for myself, could be different for you. And make your way to this place, the Venom Manor entrance, go right, go down and right to this hidden door, it's behind this thing. Um, once you're at it, and you can see a uh, wooden door, lock level 50, you can attempt to use your scroll, and it worked for me first time. So travel together, and then when you're doing these these escort missions, it's best to move like without doing any strafing. So what I mean by that is just hold W, turn with your mouse, like stop completely, turn with your mouse, and then like hold W again. So like like that kind of like a kind of a straight angle. And once he's at that rug, you can go to the next area, get out of here the same way you came. Again, once he's at the rug, move on. Here, we're, we basically rescued him. And you're just going to go, the, you're, you're going to want to go the same way I'm going right now. 
was kind of to the left. We were there. Uh, get your adrenaline rush ready. Go to the Sarethi Manor, move forward immediately. Get him start moving. Cast your adrenaline rush about now. He'll say thank you. Then you can talk to him about Redder and Hortator. Goodbye, and then recall. And here, you want to immediately use your pants. And now, see where. See, this is the start. This is like that reference point that I was talking about earlier. Now you're gonna go. You're gonna want to go to the right of it, to Ramarin Manor, and move straight down, straight line. Get your recall amulet ready. Talk to this person about Hortator. Goodbye and recall. And then you should realize that your cursor should be like in this direction already, and you have to go to this one, which is to the left of the, the triple doors. Here you have to go right, down here, and in their private quarters, and talk to this person. Talk to them about Hortator, goodbye, recall. Go to the triple doors. I think they're all the same. They all go to the same place. You're going to want to go to the right, to the council hall. Or the left, you're going to want to take the left door, I mean, and then go... You're here, you're, you go straight down. Go through the, the, the doorway. Talk to her about Redden Hortator. And recall. Uh, now you're going to want to go to the right of the triple doors. To Arabar Manor. Go straight. Straight again, there's another door right in your face. And then to the right here. And then to the left in the bedroom. Talk to him about Hortator, Recall. And here you're going to want to go back to that first place. Um, and while you're doing that, you have to hit next spell three times. Um, and get your um, CV intervention ready. And you should have Levitation up, but I don't because I'm going slowly. And you want to talk to this man in his fancy armor. Talk to him about Hortator. He's the only one who doesn't have your support because you, like, totally rescued that guy's son from him. Which is bad for his politics, I guess. And then he challenges you to, to a duel to the death. So after you've done that, goodbye. Use your CV, And then you're at the temple. We're going to want to go to the Silt Strider. Just past this big dome building. Travel to Balmora. You should have your pants up because you wow. should have just used them. We have to go to Caius now. Use a recall at Caius. Talk to him about orders. I'm ready for anything. Continue. Goodbye. Go back to the Silt Strider using levitation. You have to go to Vivek. Turn left, use your pants, go to this gondola. It's faster if you levitate, so use uh, travel to Hla Ode. Here you're going to want to wait 24 hours for Adrenaline Rush and your pants to re recharge them a little bit. So once you've done that, travel to Narmok. And when you're here, um, use your pants immediately and go kind of this way, like past the dock. You can see there's these little wooden bridges. Oh, you also want to use Adrenaline Rush while you're floating and enter the cave. Here, this is kind of like a tricky movement part. Um, but I'll go through it slowly, and then I'll go through it fast. So you go down, and go left. Get your pants ready, because you'll need to levitate again. Try not to get bumped into those stalactites. 
stalagmites. Go straight. Pass these two fires around the bend. Next area, this one is just 90 degree turn to the right, and you're at the next area. And you'll see this downwards passage. Go past the fire. First left you get to, and then left again. And go past the scamp. It shouldn't hit you. And now you're in the final area. Go straight, and you see these two these two uh, little fire pits. So this dialogue box will always pop up when you get near. Um, say goodbye as fast as possible. Switch to fire, and once you hit him, he can reflect at you, um, which is pretty bad because you know you only have 82 health at this point, and it does like 35 to 60 damage. So you pretty much always want to use a restore health after you do the first scroll. And then switch to fire and just alternate between the two. And I like to move back this way. Because that's where the, these, these, um, these legendary artifacts are. And then when he dies, this, this box will come up. Just press space. Just take these... And then recall. Well met. And you're back at Caius. But I'll show what it looks like kind of going quickly. You can check your levitate buff if it's beginning to fade. You should cast it again so you don't fall down, and which is a little bit slower. So we hang a right, go down here, go left, and then left again. Again, trying to use diagonal movement as much as possible while still kind of going in a straight line. Head past the fire pits. Goodbye. I move over to this little thing here. I shouldn't have to kill that guy. And then hit OK with spacebar, take the, the gauntlets, hit recall. And at this point, you might have damage strength from the tomb with the vampire in it. Um, so you can use your restore strength and restore agility and then equip your Fists of Radigolf. Which I get these because the, uh, res the Fortify Strength is pretty big. It gave me a whole like 100 extra encumbrance. Um, so see I have basically halfway I'm halfway encumbered, which um, is directly correlated to how fast you move. So now I'm only like... I'm like 40% or... 30... High 30% or something. So I should be moving a little bit faster with this thing on. Also gives me a bit of armor. But, yeah. And the agility is nice, because if you get hit at any point, you won't really get staggered. Because if you have that, that is dependent on your agility, partially, and it's nice to have the extra agility. So talk to him about orders. Continue, continue, goodbye. And you should have levitate up, but I was really sloppy there. And make your way to the Silt Strider. We're gonna go to Vivek again. And here, we're going to do a bunch of uh, Hortator stuff, or Halalu Hortator. So once you arrive at Vec, immediately use a potion to mark, and turn around, travel to Saran. Once you're at Saran, use your pants, go this way, kind of toward the bridge. 
but a little bit left of the bridge. To this uh, little house here. Get your recall amulet ready. Go left here and up. It's easy to get caught on something. I don't know what you're getting caught on, but it happens a lot. So I just kind of wiggle my mouse around and hit a bunch of keys to get unstuck. And talk to Nevena Ulis about Halalu Hortator and goodbye. Recall. And then levitate toward this uh, this gondola, this travel person. Should have I should have pants up or the levitate up still. Uh, again, I'm going kind of slowly. <clears throat> so set your mark here now, in front of this this woman. Travel to Vivek Telvani. And then use your pants again. And we're gonna go to about this spot on the map. So I, I use diagonal movement again. I'll go straight, I guess, just to see, just to show you what it looks like. We're going to that, that building over there. Get your recall amulet ready again. Enter that door. You gotta turn left. Go up. Open the door again. Talk to Volanda Omani. About Redoran, or Halu Hortator. Goodbye, recall. And now I want to get my wizard staff ready. So I just have to press 6 and then next spell. Sometimes it gets messed up. And it gets sent like kind of to the front. So if that happens, you just have to open up your menu for Wizard Staff, and then travel to Arena. Use the staff, go directly up, just point up and go up into this Arena Pit entrance. And use your Frost Scrolls on this guy. Um, kind of move toward him. Use one scroll at max range, and then float up back like up in the air so he starts to flee and just kind of keep doing that and then he shouldn't hit you and then make your way to the St. Alms Cannon uh, with levitation we have to go to the Yingling Manor first to the left in the store Close the door. Get on top of the bed. And then you should be in a safe spot so that he kind of like bugs out and doesn't attack you at all. See, I messed up. You kind of have to be like max distance in a way. See, I was too far there. I don't think I want you around anymore. Yeah, that wasn't great. But, I mean, as long as you don't get hit and you kill him pretty quickly, that's that's really all you have to do. You can even move forward and back a little bit. So once you've killed him, get out of here. Get an Undusi ready, and... So you enter this way, you want to go this way to the Haunted Manor. Go down here. It's a lock, level 50, so you have to use scroll. And hopefully it works first try. Get your recall amulet ready. Talk to Dram Barrow about Balu Hort's Tor. Tell your story. Goodbye. Recall. Get your pants ready. Travel to Balu. And do the same thing. Levitate directly up into the plaza. Go to the right. You see these little things. This is the Curio Manor. Go left and down. Take this door. Talk to Crassius about Balu Hortator. Tell your story. And then give him a thousand drakes. And then hit a recall. Oops. Recall. Now we're gonna make our way toward the 
travel person again. And get your pants ready. You should have the wizard staff levitate still at, or the travel stain pants levitate still active. So go to Telbranora. Use a mark here. Use your pants. You should have a charge if you did everything properly. If you didn't, just use your wizard staff and go to this tower. And there's a bunch of eggs everywhere. That's how you know you're in the right place. Go down, go up and to the left. And then there's doors on the left. And you immediately have to float up and then point to this little corridor and then to the right. Talk to Therana. And you have to bribe her to 80. So do it as many times as you need till it's greater, uh, equal to or greater than 80. And then talk to her about Hortator. Tell your story and goodbye. Recall. Whatever you're looking for, and I'm sure travel to Sadrith Mora. We're gonna we're gonna wait uh 24 hours. Um, pop a Rising Force potion that you just got from um, Caius. Uh, these give you, I believe they give you 20 points of levitate, which is better than Travel Stained Pants' 10 points. And we have to move to this point on the map. So we ought to use like a, a little bit faster levitate. So open up your menu after you rested 24 hours. Use a potion, scroll up, adrenaline rush, and move. Try to move diagonally toward this, toward this spot on the mat. Again, if you're kind of getting lost on these kinds of parts that are just like, you know, you're going through a lot of the game that you might not have seen in a while. It's good to just make a save point and just practice getting from point A to point B. So go up the tower and immediately you have to go up and then make a, a mark here. Offer the offer the artifact as a gift. And then talk to him about Corpus. Tell him you knew nothing about the prophecies. Continue. Goodbye. Go down. And back the way we came. And we gotta go down. Just keep going straight. Keep going down. Go to the right. To the Corpusarium. And open this gate. Go straight. Keep going straight. Talk to this guy about the boots. And then recall. Potion, give me the potion, continue, continue, goodbye. And then once once you've gotten that that uh, spell casted on you, just turn around, fresh a levitate, go back down the same way out. Here it's only down and then hang left out of here. And now we have to go from here to about here. See there's a little visual cue, kinda looks like Kind of looks like a dick, honestly. This little part. That's how I recognize it. Um, so yeah, we're going to want to levitate towards that direction. <clears throat> you got to go over these mountains. You might have to refresh levitate. So just watch this. This little thing, see how it's fading away? I kind of messed up there, but we want to head to these... This cluster of yurts. And then get your frost go ready. And then, this person only needs three. It won't melee you, if you just do three scrolls. Take his robe. You can do the uh, left click, right click method. It's probably the best way. This guy takes four. After you use one, you want to move back a little bit. And he shouldn't hit you. But we just need to kill him, we don't need to take anything. So once it says your journal has been updated, you can head out. 
go next door to Ashkan's yurt. It's gonna be two guys. So just do one and one, one and one, one and one, until they're dead. And this guy take his amulet and take this guy's class axe. Wait 24 hours, then wait another hour. I'll explain why. Basically, if you didn't do that, your adrenaline your adrenaline rush wouldn't be ready, like right then and there for some reason. I don't know why it happens. But after you after you rest and take those items from those guys, uh, talk to her about Nerevarian prophecies. Continue. Goodbye. I'm and point right. See, this is like the one, two, three, fourth year from the left to Han Amu's year. Talk to Han Amu about prophecies. Want to be Ashkan? Give him the robe. Want to be Ashkan? Give him the heart of fire. And again, give him the axe, and then name you Nereverine. And then get a Divine Intervention scroll ready and use it. We're gonna want to do this. We're gonna want to do the same thing with the uh, Rising Force potion after you use Divine Intervention and pop one. Start making your way toward that tower. Then get a Drilling Rush ready and and go to this tower. Telnaga Upper Tower. Go straight ahead to Neloth. Neloth. Bribe him to 80, like usual. Talk to him about Hordator. He doesn't ask for anything else and just say goodbye. And now we have to go to Telarun. And it's kind of nice. There's already a marker here. And you know it's kind of north from place where you were just before. So we're just going to levitate all the way there. I'll say it again, like, you can use saves to, like, practice getting here as fast as possible if you keep getting lost. So we gotta go to this tower. Um... Use your pants again, right in front of the door. Get your frost scroll ready. And this... Moving through this part is really annoying, but you gotta go up and then through here. And this fight is kinda tricky, so the way I do it is I initiate the fight with a frost scroll. Um, and then I kind of like fly up kind of toward the ceiling, and that makes him flee immediately instead of try to fight you with his two Dramora here, which is uh, really annoying. But they can also reflect uh, a scroll, and it does kind of a little AoE damage, this, this frost scroll, five feet in touch. So it can reflect, so you pretty much, a lot of the time you just want to use a uh, restore health potion as soon as you initiate the fight, but I'll show you what it looks like. Just keep spamming scrolls at him, and then get out of here as fast as possible after he's died, after he's dead, and then we gotta head down, kind of this way. You'll see these cages of sorts, and then talk to this woman, something special, something special, something special. I'll buy her. Goodbye. Open up the lock with your key that you received. Talk to Falora. Um, talk to her about herself. Continue. Some presents, and travel together. Accompany me, and goodbye. Now this is kind of an annoying part, another escort quest, but... You kind of have to move up this this slope, kind of turn left a little bit. Not all the way up though, kind of stop here. And you want to go down, kind of like, you don't want to be near that side, you want to be uh, like in this area. And again, the best way to move while you're doing escort missions is to just hold W 
and move in a straight line, and when you need to turn, use your mouse and turn to the precise angle you want to turn. Like, stop moving completely, let go of W, turn, and then, and then, like, just hold forward again. That's for every escort mission, because if you strafe and if you move backwards and do all this other stuff, it'll, it'll mess them up. They also, like, copy your movement. And for some reason, they only copy that kind of movement really well. So you want to just move exactly like that. So head toward this dock, this kind of weird looking dock. And again, just hold W, turn. Keep doing that. Uh, she can fall here sometimes if you moved in a weird way. Which is annoying because you'd have to go up and make her move more than needed and she should be like right behind me so travel to Talmora and you should have your pants ready so use them point all the way up straight up and head to this door the upper tower and we want to talk to Dratha another one of those people you have to bribe to 80 And then talk to them about Hortator. And you want to choose the first option. Hurl yourself at her feet. Continue with your story. Goodbye. And leave. Head straight down. Um, Thalora shouldn't be... She should be stopped. If you did it right. If you moved the, the correct manner. And talk to the person next to her. Travel to Vols. Um, actually, I was supposed to, I was supposed to wait, uh, when we were in Talarune. Basically, once we first grabbed her, I was supposed to wait 24 hours before I traveled. So I'll just do it now. But yeah, that funny looking dock, you're supposed to wait at the end of it, travel, or uh, wait 24 hours, and then travel to Telvos. And now we're at Vos. But well, we're not gonna do this escort mission now. We're gonna talk to her, tell her to wait. Again, use your last rising force potion, because now we have to go to this spot, and then we have to go all the way up here. So if we use adrenaline rush and the faster uh, levitation, we'll get there sooner. Oh, you also need to mark. It's very important. So we're going up to this kind of like a mix of like Imperial Tower and whatever Telvani architecture. Go to Aryan's Chambers, go up to the right. Get your recall amulet ready while you're at it. Talk to him about Hortator, you don't need to bribe him. Tell your story, goodbye, and then open up the dialogue again. Talk to him about Hortator, and that completes the Telvani Hortator quest. Hit goodbye. Recall. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You don't recall there. You keep... You just go out the same way. Just pretend I didn't do that. Like, after you're done talking to him, you exit and go this way. And we're making our way to the Ahamusa Nereverine. Or the Ahamusa camp, or the Ahamusa Nereverine quest. And once you arrive, you want to you want to enter the leftmost yurt in this little cluster, Tukowski's yurt. Just talk to him about Nereverine. Hopefully, you don't have to scroll down, but if you do, it's fine. Um, so Nereverine, goodbye. Exit, and then go to the wise woman who doesn't have a rug here, but it's the first one on the right. Not that little... It's the larger yurt. It's right there. Talk to her about Nereverine. Say, I want to. I want the Ayamusa to make me Nereverine. Then use this little dialogue here, save place. Accompany you twice. 
and yes, and then goodbye. And then you should be able to just exit straight and she'll follow you. And now we're going to cross this little ocean to head all the way up here. And thankfully she has water walk somehow. But I'm gonna move in a very in a very particular manner that you should just try to emulate. It's basically just a straight line as much as possible. So I get my I want to get my wizard staff ready because it's a, a much longer duration. It's 120 seconds, whereas this is 30 seconds, and I don't need to be moving fast, so the uh, the one point is fine. And basically, you want to move straight toward that little rock here. See this little rock? And we always want to be moving so that she is also sprinting, but not too far. So at this point, the next is in between these two pillars here. This one and that one, in between them. So again, don't don't strafe. Uh, stop moving and use your mouse to point in the proper direction. And just move in a straight line with W only. That's really the best way to do this. And then you're going to see this. Redirect yourself to this this little island here. And hopefully a uh, cliff racer doesn't aggro. It looks like it did, so that's kind of annoying. So just go up, use a frost scroll. And just keep heading the same way you were heading. It shouldn't cost you that much time if it happens, so it's okay. And now we're going to go down and to the left. And you can't see it, but this is like kind of the precise spot that uh, I want to be going. That's a straight line. Now you can see that rock. If you're pointing at the rock, just stop, turn left, and then head a little to the left of it so you're not going straight into it. And again, don't move like way ahead of her, but you can move like a good amount ahead of her. And we're almost there. You can use third person if you want. I don't really care to do it, but it's an option. And you want to just make your way to the land. Sometimes she bugs out and does this thing. That was weird. Um, so sh sometimes she bugs out, but she'll eventually follow you. And now, when you're here, you want to—you're gonna want to go this way to the right. But there's also a Nyx Hound. If you can see it right there, there's a Nyx Hound that may or may not aggro and start to fight her. And I'll just see, like, I'll just see what happens. You just move up the stairs. Alright, it looks like we're good. She's close enough. Yep, she was close enough so that that thing didn't ruin our day. And, yeah. Use your levitation here. Open up your menu. Select the Summon Golden Saint. And then immediately summon it in front of that person. Well, that was kind of weird. You, sh you should do it sooner than that. And it crashed, so hold on. I just saved, so it's fine. Hopefully you won't have crashes. I actually just had a crash on the attempt that I did before this, at this very point. Which is really rare. It's only other, happened like one other time, but yeah, that sucked, so I just lost the run. I was ahead. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have your summon golden saint and just pop it in front of them immediately. This guy is on the right. Use a frost scroll, fly up a little bit, and he should flee. And he takes four scrolls. And hopefully... 
So this person has a paralyzation weapon, and it's a real pain in the ass when you don't have the summon golden saint uh, available to you. And you will always have that scroll from um, the Dratha part, when you have to talk to Dratha. So, what can happen is the poison... His, po his uh, paralyzation effect can reflect from the Golden Saint, which is really nice, because then he's paralyzed. And, yeah. But that doesn't always happen. But, kill him uh, uh, with Frost Scrolls. And then make your way basically straight. That was the entrance. We're going straight. This door. If your levitation wore off, rest 24 hours. Get your recall ready. Run straight to the statue. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Just run straight to the statue. And when she gets near you, she will initiate the dialogue automatically. So it name you Nerverine. Goodbye, recall. And now we have to do this other escort mission. So travel together, yes. Again, we're, we're going to want to do that move forward strategy and just turn. And you don't have to be moving like diagonally because, you know, she, she only goes a certain speed. So it's fine if you just move forward. And just take the same path I'm taking. I don't know if there's a better path. You may discover one, but this is the way I like to go. Kind of just following the paths. And we have to go here. And while you're doing this, get a Elm CV intervention scroll ready, and you want to just lower like the Magicka casting so that you don't like fat finger it or something and mess up your run. I aggroed something because the music changed. Yeah, there's a Nick sound. That's okay. Not great, but it happens. You don't lose too much time. So go up this hill, because you want to go up this hill because there's these assholes over there that will that will want to fight you. So we just avoid them. I aggroed another Nyx Hound, which is just completely random, their position. So use a Frost Scroll if that happens. Let's see how I'm doing on Frost Scrolls. I got 26. I th should be enough? Yeah, it should be enough. I aggroed something again. It's just a rat. If it doesn't... If it doesn't, like... If she doesn't start to fight it, um... Just keep going. Alright, I lost track of where I was. Oh, we have to go this way. There's another enemy here. She's gonna copy my movement. Um, but yeah, just practice this part so you know exactly where to go. You don't get lost. It's really not too hard. It's just a matter of knowing where to go. And since I had to use a scroll, I have to select Om CV again. Once she's near the door, you can enter Ashkanzir. And then talk to him about Nerevrine, Telvani Bride, and goodbye. Use your Om CV. You're at Alderun now. Use your pants, go up. We have to go talk to this guy again. Set a mark outside the door, enter. And use your re or set up your recall. Go to the Sarethi Manor, Red and Horde Tour continue. Goodbye and recall. Now head to the the uh start the Silt Strider. Go to Balmora. Get your pants ready. Um use a recall potion right here. Go to Caius. Get your recall ready again. 
so you can just hit goodbye and recall instantly. Talk to him about orders, goodbye, and recall. Travel to Vivek. Now you want to recall or, or mark again. And then immediately um, see the intervention. This will put you at the temple. And we have to get to Mara Milo. So we have to get to her office first. So go straight and then left and then a 180 here. Get an undo C ready. And it'll work every time because it's only a level 20 lock. Look at the note and you can take it. I don't know if you have to take it or just see it. But I just take it. And then use um, CV again. And use your pants, go straight up to this floating rock. Talk to this person here. Isn't anyone continuing goodbye? Go all the way up around this little wooden part. Go left and up. Get an undo C again ready. And then there's another level 10 locked door there. And another one. You take the cell to the right. Talk to Mara Milo. Divine Intervention Scrolls continue. Goodbye. Use one yourself. And you can use your pants again. Go straight up. Over these archways or whatever you want to call them. Just keep going. This direction. Again, you always want to be moving diagonally. Talk to her about know you, go fishing, and yes, and then travel to the only option. And now you have to enter this this monastery, but it has to be 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. So right now it's 9 a.m. Let's do a little math. That's it should be nine hours. Oh, for some reason, like this can happen. There can be an enemy. So if there is, um. It's only five, so wait another hour. Go up the hill, straight. You can see this, this crazy looking entrance. It is now open because it's 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Get your uh, get your recall amulet ready. Talk to this man. Mara Milo's right there. Talk to the guy to the left of her about lost prophecies and continue. Goodbye and a recall. Once you've recalled, you're back at the start of Vivek. So I'm saving intervention again. Get an undo C ready. Talk to this person that's right here. Meet the arch cannon. Meet the arch cannon. Goodbye and head to the door left to the left of you. Straight ahead, there's a locked door. So hopefully it works. If you're fast enough, you won't have the ordinator catch you. But if it's fine, if it does, you just pay. You have to pay uh, ten gold. Talk to this person about temple's doctrine. Continue. Yes, I will meet with Vivek, and goodbye. Go through that door, go down, to the left, then another left. Use your pants if you don't have the levitation up already, and fly up the stairs. Get your recall ready, talk to Vivek, business, continue, accept. Yes, I swear, continue. And I don't know if you need to say... I don't know if you need to bring up this option, defeat Degather. I just do it anyway, just in case. And then recall. Travel to Balmora. And then to Aldrun. And get your adrenaline, adrenaline rush ready. Um, what I do is when, when I get here, I move myself back on the platform a little bit. I have my adrenaline rush ready. I cast it. That makes sure I'm pointing toward this point on the map. There you go, Ur. You should be able to view it. Um, it should be marked. I believe maybe if you say defeat Dagoth Ur, it appears. That could be the case. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, you want to be pointing like pretty much at that marker. So you use Adrenaline Rush, you have you have to um, get your last Icarian flight out. Maybe you want to save, and then 
cast it and jump. Get your pants ready. At this point, you wanna use a mark around here. And now you have to go towards Odrosol down here. It's good if you use a mark up there because once you recall again, you're kind of in a good spot. So get an Undusi ready to the store, uh, unlock it. It's it'll work every time. Go up to this this area. Now you have to equip wait, uh, Wraith Guard. So do that. Take Keening and again equip it because you get a speed buff. And recall. Okay. So, we want to use another mark at around here. Because if you look, it'll it'll mark you um, right on the floor. And if we actually go down to that spot, there's a, that's the crank for the last part. So, you shouldn't have to go down like that, you can just float pretty high up and use it. And then make your way toward this location, Vemno. And get your pants ready, because your levitation will probably expire. It's hard to see anything, but you can just tell kind of where you are from the, the main map. And I go this way, like, if you see this tower, just head straight down, that's where you have to go. And here you want to head left or right, doesn't matter which one. Make your way past the enemy, open the door on the right, go straight, now hang right, use your pants again, open up this door, and there's this dude here. Use any fire scrolls you have left. Uh, they do more damage, but it's fine if you don't have any. He won't really be of like he won't really threaten you at all. He'll just kind of cast like weak spells at you. Um, but you can burst him down with those those scrolls, and it's fine. Take all. Use a recall. And now we want to use the one of the amulets we just got, amulet of Hearthiel. It gives a good levitation buff, uh, strength and a shield, and fortify hand-to-hand, -hand, which is completely worthless. But, the strength buff is nice, because, again, it's like you move faster if this percentage is lower. And it also gives you a higher lev levitate than um, the travel stain pants. So immediately after you recall, open up your menu, use the hearth heal amulet, open the crank, go straight to the door, Want to head down? I'll go through it slowly and then go through it quickly. Open up the right door. Head left here. Just make your way past all the enemies. The next area, straight down to the right. Straight and to the right, and down and down to the next area. Straight ahead. And now you want to mark here. This is the last mark. Two scrolls and kind of float up. Use a, a restore health and keep spamming scrolls. And try to float up away from him um, because kind of reduces like the likelihood you'll get meleeed by him. What a fool you are! And now we're at the last part. Get Sunder on yourself. What a grand I think my levitate's about to expire, so I should brush so it. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work Keep using restore place. health potions no. if you got them. Hit it once with Sunder, then five times. Get your recall ready. And once you see your journal's been updated, use recall. You and no that's longer it. So, we, as you can see, um, you can kind of assess, like, your items. Did you have too many uh, restore health? 
Sometimes you'll have none, sometimes you'll have a couple, sometimes you'll have a lot. Just depends on how how well you do. Um, I think I had 80 Drat This Winter guest, but I got 11 remaining. I don't have any fire remaining, which isn't a big deal, because you mainly need them for the Nord that we killed like way long time ago. Um, so that's it. And I just want to bring up some other things um, that I didn't mention at all. So I like to have the save point. Um, it's basically right after I get the boots. And this allows me to just set up my menus quickly. And the first thing, the, buy, the barter menu will always be like this. Uh, for how I do things, so I want to expand it again. And then you can go to Caldera again, set up this other menu for training. Gonna go to Shang Shovel. Up the stairs, to this Khajiit, and move the window so that the training button is on athletics every time. So that's a good position. And once you've got those two things set up, hit new game. This is the last thing I set up every time, um, and you'll see what I mean. Name it whatever, you're not actually gonna do a run on this. I heard them say we reached more of it. I'm sure they'll let us go. Quiet. Here comes the guard. This is where you get on. Come with me. You can practice the little pillar skip here. If you point around here, you can have your cursor at red guard, but there's also another method of manipulating the cursor by pressing escape um, before you get to him. You kind of press escape and move it, and then I guess it manipulates it so it'll be on that position, but I haven't really implemented that yet. You can do the same thing for these menus as well, but I just look in the ceiling because it... I don't know, it's just my method. Or it got messed up because I was doing a little manipulation with the cursor. So you have to create your class. Now you do the stealth, speed, personality, long blade, athletics, restoration, unarmored, and mercantile, but since we can set up like more skills because we don't actually lose time i just take some more minor skills just to give me a little bit extra of an edge but it's really minor it doesn't really even matter that much so i opt for heavy armor because um the fists of radagulf and wraithguard are heavy pieces heavy armor so if you have a couple extra points in armor it could prevent a death, possibly, but you shouldn't really be getting hit. Um, I take short blade for a caning in the end, because you have to hit the heart five times, so if you hit it every time, you know, it just gives you a small, smaller, slightly better chance of successful attack. Uh, I take speechcraft for the bribing. Um, it gives you a little bit better chance of... Uh, bribe success, and it should also increase like the magnitude that their disposition increases by. And also take acrobatics, and the acrobatics is for isn't really helpful, but it's it's helpful like right after you do the scamp shopping in Caldera, you have to hop out of the balcony 
And if you jump a little bit higher, it should like reduce the chance of you getting caught on the little the little like ledge that's there. So this is the class I choose every time. So the important thing about this this little like manipulation I guess you can call is once you've set everything up, hit escape, hit new. And now you're ready to do a run. So I'm just gonna get into a run. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, by the way. Uh, I hope it gets more people into the game. As far as I know, there isn't any real tutorial on this, so it should be helpful to anyone trying to get into it, because the way I had to learn was by watching um, the previous record. And that guy doesn't speak English. Like, he speaks some English, but he's mainly speaking in Ukrainian, I believe. And I just had to copy exactly what he was doing. I had to take notes and just memorize everything. You will have to memorize everything as well if you do this run. But yeah, I didn't have any, in, like, explanations. I just had, like, I just had to watch and kind of learn for myself. And I came up with a bunch of new things uh, as I played that save a lot of time. What do you mean they are glitchful runs?